Hey, I'm Miss Management and today I have another list of management, tycoon and simulation games for you. I've given a brief overview of these games and I hope that you find something interesting in there. First up is Wobble Dogs. Wobble Dogs is an adorable and insane dog breeding and genetics game where you raise and care for dogs that mutate over time. Wobble Dogs develop different traits and personalities and you can reinforce different behaviours. Your dog's gut microbes change depending on what they eat, and this will affect how their genetics mutate, allowing you to breed different shapes, sizes, colours, and much more. The game is pretty relaxing, and there are goals for progression, new objects are unlocked through capsules to create unique habitats, and you can store away your special dogs for safekeeping. You can also save and share Wobble Dogs through the community to crossbreed with others. If you enjoyed Spore, Viva Pinata, or the Pets series, I'd highly recommend checking out Wobble Dogs. Next up is Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver is a newly released early access game. You play as a scuba diver and manager of a restaurant, farming sea creatures to keep things running. You'll explore the depths of ocean maps and complete quests given to you by friends met along the way. There are multiple ways to catch fish, including the harpoon and several types of guns and melee weapons. When you're finished diving each day, you'll switch to running your sushi restaurant, where you'll need to manage your menu according to the fish you have, hire and train staff, offer nice restaurant decor, and respond to customers' special requests. Sea creatures will react to you differently, and each dive is an opportunity to learn more about the sea around you and its inhabitants. It's a lovely and unique game with beautiful artwork. Number three is Stacklands. Stacklands is a village simulation game played with cards. Stack cards to collect food and resources, build structures, create new villages, and fight enemies. You'll need to keep up enough food to feed your villagers while trying to expand and deal with any situations that arise. Complete quests and sell excess resources to gain coins, used to unlock new card packs, allowing you to expand even more. It's a simple but addictive game, and I really love getting to open new card packs. Number four is Bear and Breakfast. Bear and Breakfast is a story-driven resource and management game where you take over an abandoned building and open and expand a bed and breakfast in the forest. To bring visitors in, you'll collect resources, craft furniture, and cook and clean for your guests as well. Guests have different expectations, which increase as the story progresses. Your room size and the furniture within it determines the comfort and decoration levels. Collect resources from the forest to repair furniture, build new things, and as you explore new areas, you'll meet new characters who will have quests for you. Completing these quests give rewards for your resorts, including recipes and blueprints for new furniture. As you progress, you'll unlock the ability to open new hotels, allowing you to manage multiple locations. It takes time to progress through the story and unlock features, and there's a lot of character dialogue, but you'll slowly get access to new tools and the ability to hire staff to help complete chores. It's fairly easy to make money, and you can take your time to lay things out exactly how you want them. It's a really nice, relaxing, story-driven game with adorable art. Number five is The Tenants. The Tenants is a management game where you play as a landlord, buying properties, renovating, taking on jobs, and managing rentals of your apartments. Decide how to design and style your apartments for certain types of tenants, and choose how to react to annoyed neighbors or inappropriate activities. You'll start out taking jobs for other landlords and homeowners around the city. You might fix up their apartments or take on some tenant babysitting opportunities to make some cash and get yourself going. You'll be given your own space to renovate and rent out, building up money to buy more properties. Your tenants will come to you with any issues in the apartment, including pests or power faults, and they'll also suggest renovations to suit their lifestyle. As you progress through the game, you'll expand the furniture and decor available to you. It can get a bit repetitive after a while, but I'd really recommend it if you enjoy designing and decorating. Number six is Mega Aquarium. Mega Aquarium is a casual aquarium management game where you create ideal tanks of a range of tropical and cold water fish, as well as sharks, rays, crustaceans, corals, starfish, and jellyfish. Make sure you're attaching the appropriate filters heaters or coolers to your tanks, as well as ensure that the fish you place together will get along. You'll hire staff to feed animals, fix broken equipment, clean and talk to your guests. You can add directional markers for your guests so they don't get lost, and this also helps to create a nice sort of traffic flow within your aquarium. 
Building on a grid makes it an easy game to play, and while the building options can feel a bit limited, there's an active modding community and plenty available on the Steam Workshop to spruce up your game. It has slight puzzle aspects, trying to fit the filtration and heating or cooling facilities, and needing to rearrange tanks as fish grow larger. Overall, it's a lovely and casual game, and great if you like the original Zoo Tycoon games, with simple grid-style exhibit decorating. Number 7 is Strange Horticulture. Strange Horticulture is a decision-making and investigation game, played through the eyes of a shopkeeper. You've inherited a plant shop in a mysterious town, and a range of characters will stop by. As you interact with customers, you'll slowly weave their stories together. Most customers are after a specific plant or desired effect, so you'll need to identify plants based on what they've asked for. If you provide the wrong plant, you'll gain what's called Rising Dread, which will give you a puzzle break if you reach a certain limit, and this forces you to take time in identifying plants correctly. Create your own labelling or organisation system so you can remember the plant next time someone asks for it, and unlock new plants by solving clues on the map. You'll be presented with decisions that impact how the rest of the story plays out. Choose between two plants to give your customer, each with a different outcome. Making different decisions in new playthroughs will give different story endings. Plus, you also have an adorable purring cat. Number 8 is Clan Folk. Clan Folk is a medieval colony sim set in the Scottish Highlands. While it looks similar to RimWorld, it's important to note that it has distinct differences. It's not as intricate or deep, is less overwhelming for a lot of players as well. Aside from hunting, there's no real combat, no raids, and it's more centered around the building and maintaining a village for your clan. As someone who likes playing RimWorld on Karma settings, I really like clan folk's focus on building of the colony and surviving nature. Your family clan will need to establish a homestead in the harsh winter, starting with small shacks and ideally making your way up to ventilated houses. Surviving your first winter is the major challenge the game presents at this moment. Travelers, traders and neighbours seeking work will visit, giving you an opportunity to make new friends, earn coins or grow your settlement. After a few seasons, you'll start to run out of new game content at this point, but you can still focus on maintaining your colony with all research unlocked. It's still in early access and the small team of developers are constantly releasing more updates and have a roadmap to full release. Number 9 is Prehistoric Kingdom. Prehistoric Kingdom is an early access dinosaur park builder with realistic graphics. It feels very similar to Planet Zoo, but obviously with prehistoric animals instead. As it's still in early access, it's not finished yet, and there are some features lacking, such as the ability to hire staff. The developers have a clear roadmap to implement all these features though, including research, new biomes, diseases and genetic mutations. Money is earned passively, depending on foot traffic at this stage, until guest and staff gameplay is implemented and improved. But if you're a fan of park builders, it's highly customizable, with Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo-like building features. Prehistoric Kingdom's Steam Workshop has also just launched, so you can further customize your game with player-made content. The in-depth building, combined with the Steam Workshop and other gameplay features in the roadmap, will eventually see this game as a very in-depth and very beautiful dinosaur park game. So if you'd like to support it from the start and get a better price, or you really want to design and decorate a dinosaur theme park, I'd recommend checking out Prehistoric Kingdom. Number 10 is Plate Up. Plate Up is a newly released time management and cooking game, best played with friends, where you serve customers as quickly as possible and clean up hazards that will slow you down. It's a roguelike with permadeath, so you need to keep up with customers and get everything correct, otherwise your restaurant will close down. It's similar to games like Overcooked, Diner Dash, and Cooking Mama. To begin, you select your restaurant layout and main dish to start with. You'll only serve this main dish through the map you've chosen, but you'll eventually unlock sides to serve with it as well. Before starting the busy day, you can rearrange the furniture and equipment of your restaurant to make it more efficient. You'll earn extra coins to purchase upgrades, new tools, and buffs. At the end of each successful day, you'll be given rewards and upgrades to choose from and purchase. And these change at the end of each day, so any that you don't purchase will be refreshed at the end of the next business day. Played Up really is a fun game to play with friends. Number 11 is Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This is a Soviet-themed city builder and colony sim with a focus on logistics and economics. Unlike other city builders, you play as the state, owning all facilities and infrastructure and managing all resources. There's a range of different game settings to choose from, and when playing on harder difficulties, you'll need to manage end-to-end -end logistics in your city, which brings a lot to stay on top of. 
You won't be able to just place a road and have it immediately appear, but your citizens will have to build it using a range of materials that can be created within the state or purchased from foreign countries. You'll need special machinery and vehicles as well as gas or petrol to get them going. There's great depth in managing your transportation, utilities and production. Playing on harder difficulties, the game takes a lot of time, patience and planning, but very rewarding when things come together. I'd recommend checking out a much more in-depth video about it if it sounds like a game that you'd like. Number 12 is Do Not Feed the Monkeys. In Do Not Feed the Monkeys, you're part of a secret group called the Observation Club, who spies on different people, referred to as primates, through CCTV. The one rule of your club is do not feed the monkeys. You'll watch surveillance camera footage through your computer, learning information about different primates and their stories. You'll have to care for yourself as well though, ordering food and completing jobs to pay rent. You can also make money by completing tasks, given to you by the Observation Club. You'll be asked to find out specific details related to your screens, and this is where your in-game computer programs and web search come in handy. New information will sometimes lead to you discovering new ways to interact with your primates, tempting you to feed the monkeys. The sequel of this game, Do Not Feed the Monkeys 2099, is set to come out early next year. Number 13 is Recipe for Disaster. Recipe for Disaster is a restaurant management game that was fully released in early August of this year. It has some good staff management, but what I love most about this game is the recipe creator. You'll get to create your own recipes from a list of ingredients and manage your menu and restaurant to get higher ratings from customers. What I found to be unique about Recipe for Disaster is that you not only choose the ingredients, but the appliance used to prepare them and the order in which they're brought together. You won't be shown any stats on your recipes as you build them, but rely on customer reviews. Employees are assigned to specific workstations to specialise their skills and increase efficiency in the kitchen. Being strategic with your workstations and employees is important. Overall, it's a fun restaurant management game with a really good recipe builder. And finally, number 14 is Founder's Fortune. Founder's Fortune is a simple but fun colony builder with multi-story building and relaxing gameplay involving base building, farming, animals, research, equipment and items, trading and combat. Your colony lives on a landmass with grassland and forest areas and resources and goblin colonies are scattered around. Each colonist has skills which correspond to professions, as well as personality traits which can include allergies to certain foods. The individual colonist management is what I really love about this game, bringing some small aspects from The Sims and enabling you to get your colonists to interact socially, as well as having individual wishes. It's a great choice for those wanting to see their colonies come to life in 3D, with lots of decoration items and options. The game forces you to appease your colonists before awarding you new ones, but it feels quite casual and calm to play. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. I hope that it included a game that maybe you didn't know about or hadn't looked much into, um, but please also comment with any recommendations on games that I should take a look at as well. Thank you again so, so much. This is Mismanagement out.